Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We've got a bunch of heat to talk about today, but it's the result of the heat and how it's affecting our weather patterns. That's the main area of concern today, as we're already seeing some big time impacts out there from this big high pressure ridge that's going to continue to cause problems as we go forward. Right now, as I'm filming this video, there's some big time storms going on out there near Paducah, Kentucky, down into Tennessee, even around Mayfield, Kentucky. They're seeing in some crazy flooding right now. In fact, as I'm making this video, Mayfield is under a flash flood emergency as there's been between six to eight inches of rain that's already fallen over there and two to four inches more is on the way. And unfortunately, this kind of thing is just gonna continue as we go forward. Here we are around 11 a.m. Eastern today with our area of showers and thunderstorms that's causing the flooding starting to try to weaken a little bit, but watch how it persists at least least through 3 or 4 p.m. today before it before it really starts to go away around western Kentucky and it continues to dump some heavy rain there in central or middle Tennessee. Uh, however, all that is going to be gone by the time we get into the afternoon and evening hours tonight only to be replaced by some severe weather back here in the uh, plains from Iowa back into Nebraska, Kansas, Front Range, Colorado. You guys are on the verge of seeing some big hail, some strong winds, maybe an isolated tornado or two and that of course is going to congeal into a big cluster of storms in normal summertime fashion and move down into Oklahoma and Missouri overnight into the early morning hours tomorrow potentially producing another warm frontal boundary that creates another area of training showers and thunderstorms over here in western Kentucky that could lead to even more flash flooding as we go into Thursday that's really unfortunate to see and then that of course turns into its own little convective system potentially causing severe weather back here and then watch this another area of new thunderstorms and severe weather is going to form over here in the Ohio Valley as we get later in the day on Thursday and also back here in Kansas so we are in this pattern where we're seeing so much activity in this area thanks to the incredible amount of heat that is rising up into the uh, western and central U.S. and that of course is why the Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather for those areas that are expecting the hail and wind today up through Minnesota down into Nebraska and Kansas and there's a marginal risk all the way out into the Carolinas as well uh, but look at tomorrow we've got three separate areas of slight risk okay we've got this down here in the Carolinas we've got a much bigger one in Ohio Kentucky and Illinois this is the one where I think we're going to see the most interesting storms we're going to see maybe some supercellular activity up here and then another big mesoscale convective system is expected to cause some wind damage back here in the Oklahoma Panhandle and southwestern uh, Kansas as we go through the day on Thursday. If you live in any of these dark green or yellow areas, make sure you are weather aware as we go into the latter portion of this week. And all of this is being driven by these hot temperatures, man, and they ain't going nowhere, especially if you're in New Mexico or the southwestern U.S. We've been setting crazy records out here, 110 degrees every day. I mean, that's basically the new normal down here in some of these places. And, and once again, daily high temperature records for uh, July are being set and more of them will probably be broken as we go forward as this uh, heat dome kind of expands off to the north. Notice how the CPC outlook does include a lot of the north central plains in this kind of excessive heat area where right now it's not really all that bad. And that's because the heat dome is going to expand. Notice how a lot of the central and eastern U.S. is cool right now and we've got a lot of that heat kind of compiling back here to the south and to the west. It's going to get really hot out there in California as we get towards Friday and Saturday. Some relief will be coming into Texas around this time, but watch how the heat dome kind of transfers like this. Okay, it goes from the south central U.S. up into Canada and then eventually tries to uh, make its way back down into the central U.S. over towards the Ohio Valley. Look at those incredible temperature anomalies as we approach Wednesday of next week, potentially 30 degrees above normal in Minnesota. That's going to be one heck of a heat wave there and that's going to stick around for quite some time Chicago Illinois Iowa all the way down into the southeast the eastern U.S. the mid-Atlantic everybody could be in for some very sweltering heat as we get into the last little bit of July and of course this is going to cause uh, even more problems as we go forward because it's not just the surface temperatures on land that are too hot the daggone ocean 
is burning up right now. Uh, I mean, look at this map. There's only a tiny little area where the sea surface temperatures are currently normal or just slightly below normal. Everywhere else is above normal to significantly above normal. We are in uh, uncharted waters here as far as you know how uh, warm the Atlantic Ocean is. And of course, that is playing a big role in our upcoming peak tropical season. Right now, things aren't crazy, but they're pretty active for where we are. Uh, it's July 19th. We've got two systems we're watching. Tropical Storm Dawn. Probably not much is going to happen with Dawn. It's going to kind of fizzle out up here. But we do have have a new African easterly wave that's going to try to make it over towards the main development region and then maybe into the Caribbean here soon. And that's something that we have to watch very closely because remember, all of this is warm right now. It's incredibly warm and hurricanes feed off of warm waters. Now, we've got a lot of stuff working in our favor, okay? We've got wind shear out there in the Caribbean. There's all kinds of thunderstorms happening in the Pacific right now, and that is kind of leading to a lot of wind coming over the uh, you know, the Central America area into the Caribbean and that upper level wind combined with the lower level wind creates uh, wind shear and that tears hurricanes apart. However, if a hurricane gets strong enough or if we get a brief break in that kind of pattern, things could get pretty nasty out here, especially with a wave like this, which this is what we're watching back here. It is going to continue to go this way. Um, and we do expect once it gets over here, it's probably going to have, uh, you know, a hard time maintaining its strength, but it's too early to say exactly what's going to happen. Here's what we're watching on the GFS model. Let's pull it forward. Right now, I am not seeing anything too crazy in the short term, okay? We're not seeing this blow up into a giant hurricane before it gets to the Lesser Antilles, which is a very good sign. If we saw it, you know, increase in strength that much, it might have had a better chance against the shear. However, uh, this model does show a continued area of interest all the way into the Caribbean, and then even up into the Gulf. Watch that thing. It gets into the Gulf, but you know, this is one model run. This is going to change 17 million times before we actually get there. This puts it close to Texas around August 2nd. It's currently July 19th. So of course, this is not a very accurate forecast, but it's one solution to a problem uh, that we're going to be paying attention to over the next several weeks. Okay. And if it's not this one, uh, there's going to be another one behind it. And this is just going to become a recurring thing that we uh, grow increasingly concerned about every tropical system that pops up because of the literal rarity of the conditions that are in place out there with those extremely high sea surface temperatures. And of course, speaking of hurricanes, you know, I've got to mention shopryanhall.com where we have our hurricane collection on display right now. I think it's it's 10% off. If you just go add one of these to your cart on shopryanhall.com right now, it'll be 10% off. Uh, we've worked hard on these shirts. A lot of you guys have gotten one already. It's the coolest, sleekest weather nerd shirt you could ever get. It's definitely a conversation starter and it's helping us uh, continue our operation here. So if you want a cool weather shirt, go to shopryanhall.com. Get one of these hurricane shirts. We've got it for youngins as well. We've got it for babies. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's cute. And of course, uh, if you're looking for a weather station or a weather radio or a handheld anemometer, anything like that, we've got that stuff over on shopryanhall.com as well. Uh, really appreciate you guys um, supporting us. And of course, it uh, allows us to do all the stuff that we do, which is very expensive. So thank you. That's pretty much all I've got for you in terms of uh, weather updates right now. Of course, I'll have more frequent updates over on Twitter if you want to follow me over there at Ryan Hall, y'all. And I'm going to have another main channel video going up here in a couple days that's very interesting. I think a lot of you guys are going to like it. So that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Whoop.